What's going on everyone? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to another video and today we have a mission. Um, we're outside the brook and they're actually doing a really cool promo right now. It's a $1,000 high hand every single hour. So the room is definitely packed with a lot of tables. Um, we're going to hop into the 2.5 and 5.10 but um, interesting stuff. Today's a Monday and for the people who haven't tuned into my live streams, Mondays are for Bachelor or The Bachelorette. Just a guilty pleasure of mine. I love tuning in and watching it every single Monday. So um, it starts at 8 p.m. Right now it's about 2.30. So we've got about five, four hours to play. Hopefully get back home in time to watch The Bachelorette. Priorities, poker, 1K high hands per hour, Bachelorette, I don't know. Just whatever. If you watch The Bachelor, let me know in the comments below so I'm not the only guy here that actually enjoys watching that series. But I'm going to hop in there. Poke your hands. Let's just get into it. Leave a like too. That's always much appreciated. And I'll try, we'll try to run it up. Here at The Brook playing 2-5, 1K max. You know the drill. First hand in, we pick up king-queen offsuit in the small blind. There's a cutoff, limp, and onto me. I put in a raise out of position to $30. And now the player to my left, three bets to 100 Action folds to me, and what a nice warm welcome to the table, warm welcome to the session. I think all three options seem okay to us, calling, folding, or four bet bluffing in this spot. I'm out of position, so it certainly would lean more towards a fold or four bet, but as played, I decided to just make the call. I'm definitely not loving this spot, not loving my line. Anyways, as played, the flop comes ace, three, five, rainbow. Ace high boards for us, um, not amazing, so when I check, he decides on a check back. Let's see a turn. The turn is a queen, and with him checking the flop seems a little suspicious, but with a pair, I decide to check. He throws out a bet of $100, and now that we've turned second pair, I'm just not gonna be folding here too often. So I just make the call, and we're off to a river. The river is a four, but the four liner on the board doesn't really matter too much. I don't think he'll have too many deuce X's in range. So I check, trying to get to showdown. He thinks for a little bit and ends up putting out a bet of $250. Given his check on the flop, I'm just going to be a non-believer in this situation. I make the call fairly quickly, and this player shows us ace-queen for top two. Had us totally dominated and played this hand fairly well. Down $500, give or take, to start. Looks like those black chips in our stack were bad luck anyways. Time to exchange them for some greens. So after a pretty bad start, we put in the under the gun straddle to $10 and look down at a premium pocket Kings, always a good time to straddle an early position player opens to $40. The big blind who makes the call is playing really, really loose and wide. Normally, uh, definitely with three bet to five X in this spot to $200, but I want calls and I want to incentivize both players and the loose player to make the call. So I size down a little bit to $180. Sadly, didn't matter what sizing I put out there, both players just snap fold. But anyways, at least we pick up a little bit of extra money with the straddle. In this next hand, we pick up ace three of clubs on the button, playing six handed, and there's a low jack player who opens to 10. Cutoff makes the call and well, we're gonna have none of this nonsense with the min opens. I'm gonna put in a three bet and raise it up to $50 in position. Only the low jack player makes the call. We're off to a flop of 956 rainbow. He checks to me, and this is obviously not the best board for my specific hand or even my range. I decide on a check back. The turn is now the ace of spades, and on this ace card, he puts out about a $40. Um, with top pair, I'm just gonna be committed here on this board now and on this pot, so never really gonna make the fold, I make the call. The river is a deuce. Heath puts out another bet, a sizable one of $100. And like I said, there's really no folding here once we turn top pair. It doesn't matter how bad our kicker is. If he has his beat, so be it. I make the call for 100. He shows us pocket eights. Um, might have turned his hand to a bluff, not really sure. But with a pair of aces, we'll take it down. Why did this one? In this next hand, we pick up king 10 of spades in the hijack, and I'm going to raise it up to $20. Only the player on the button makes the call, so we're going heads up out of position. The flop comes queen, jack, eight, rainbow. Open-ended here, we actually block some 10-9s, holding a 10 in our hand, obviously. Um, yeah, we have a backdoor flusher as well. I'm going to start off with a bet of $30 here, pretty much committing to bluff on all runouts. He thinks about it and ends up making the call for 30 
We're off to a turn, which is the seven of diamonds, not the suit that we wanted to see, but still we have good card removal to king queen, 10-9. I'm gonna size up to $60 once again and to this turn bet for 60, he ends up making the call. So now we certainly need to improve. The river is the four of diamonds and the backdoor flush rod did end up getting there, which isn't amazing. We still have only king high in a dream, but we don't love this run out. Um, he can have a few flushes as well. So we just block a lot of the draws that he may have and end up just checking this one. This player checks back and uh, I show and announce my king high and he shows us ace nine off suits for ace high. Really hurts to not pull the third barrel and bluff on this one. Obviously it would have worked out, but ace high will take it down. Looking to redeem ourselves from that last hand, we pick up eight nine of hearts on the button. There's a low jack under the gun, essentially open to $15. Onto me, I'm just gonna give the low jack under the gun player some credit. I make the call for 15 and the big blind comes along as well. Going to a flop, which comes ace, queen, seven, all hearts. So looks like we've got redemption time now. Really hard to flop a flush and sadly, action checks to me. Definitely not checking this one back with two hearts in our hand. I bet out $25 with our monster. Both players fold, just having a great time winning these really small pots with monsters. When you talk about monster hands, no bigger monster than this one, pocket aces in the small blind. We get four players to limp to me for $5 and we're not doing that, not playing for $5 here. I'm gonna raise it up to $50 out of position and only the only gun player who limped makes the call. He is playing almost every single hand, so let's go to a flop. The flop comes 10, five, six to clubs and here over pair, obviously. We're just not gonna check this one out of position. I see bet $75 and he makes the call fairly quickly. So we're off to a turn, which is a nine. Um, board a little bit more connected, but against this player type, I'm just not going to slow down here. I bet out $150 and once again, he snaps it off. So looks like he's got $400 behind and let's see a river. The river is the king of diamonds overall. Really don't love this card because I'm assuming he's on some sort of 10 X holding and I think all of them are going to be folding to a jam. So just want to size down to price in all 10 X hands and one pairs. So I bet out $125, pick the sizing to really just try to milk some value. And he just decides to rip it all in for $400 against this player type. I'm just not gonna fold. I snap it off with one pair with a pair of aces and he shows us king queen off suits. So really happy for him to river top pair. Looks like we scooped this one, but just make notes. He did call flop and turn with king queen high. He did pick up a gutter on the turn, I guess, but all things considered, happy with this run out. From one premium turns into another with pocket queens under the gun, we're playing five handed. I'm gonna raise it up to $25 here as the big blind player is the wide player and action folds to him. He makes the call, let's go to a flop. The flop is ace, six, eight, two clubs. And when he checks to us, uh, even though the ace is on the board, really hate that. Still gonna see it as he can just call super wide. It's $20 to go and he makes the call for 20. Seeing him call two streets with king high, obviously uh, just gonna get value from any two. The turn is now another ace and he checks to us again with two aces on the board, less likely that he's gonna have one. So I'm gonna fire out another bet this time to $50. And he puts in a check raise to 225. Sadly, we're gonna have to fold our hand facing any aggression from this kind of player. Looks like he, uh, he did have an ace after all, or at least he's trying to tell that story. Anyways, I believe him, let my cards go. Moving on. In our next interesting spots, we pick up ace five of spades in the small blind with a cutoff open limp. I'm definitely gonna put in a raise out of position with this hand. So I size to $30. The big blind makes the call. He seems a little tight and the cutoff player who limped folds. So I'm not sure what's going on here, but let's go to a flop of king deuce three, two hearts. King high boards and with a gutter, definitely gonna put out a C bets. So I just size to $20, see where we're at right now and he sides on making the call. The turn is a good one, which comes the ace of clubs. So found a way to once again stumble into top pair. No kicker though, but still definitely not gonna slow down. I bet out $40 for value opposed to bluffing. And he makes the call for 40 once again. So not sure what he could be holding, but the river is a six. So with one pair, no real good kicker. 
I can sometimes block that or check. I decided to size to $50. It's just tiny. Trying to get King X to make a crying call for all three streets. But he snaps off $50. I just show my hand with a pair of aces and he shows ace queen. So looks like we're uh, struggling to win some hands now after running really well with the aces hand. The next interesting spot we get involved in with Jack-10 of spades and plus one, there's an Onigun stride also playing 2-5-10. I open things up to $40. Action folds around to the small blind, who three bets to 115. Action folds to me for 115 to go. I'm just not going to be folding this one. We're in position. Let's go to a flop. We make the call. The flop comes queen 7 4 rainbow. Pretty gross. We've got absolutely nothing. A few backdoor straight draws, but that's it. He surprisingly checks to us, and um, yeah, we're just going to take the free card, see what we can hit to improve on. We check back with no equity. The turn is the three of clubs. He puts out a bet of $105 now, another delayed C bet, and I'm going to be out of this one real quickly. Unfortunately, uh, not too interesting of a hand, but it does go to show when you play 2-5-10. It's really easy to lose $100, $115 here in this instance without really doing too much. For one of the last notable hands of the session, picking up once again, pocket queens on the button. Can we please win this one? Under the gun opens up to $20. The cutoff, who's fairly wide, makes the call. Definitely putting in a three bet, and I size to 80 bucks to go. And $80 is good enough. Both players make the call. So three ways to a flop of ace, nine, six, two diamonds. Once again, facing another ace high board with pocket queens. Action checks to me. As the three better here in this instance, I feel like I just kind of have to continue betting here. And we do have the queen of diamonds to fall back to run our diamond draws. So I'm definitely going to bet out $80. Going to bet my range, see where we're at. Only the unigun player makes the call. Cut off folds. So I'm um, now really just hating the spots, hoping for runner runner. The turn is the jack of clubs. Now we lose to pocket jacks if you ever had that. He checks and easy spots. We're going to check back and probably not put any more money in the middle. The river is a six board is now paired and he now leads out for $225. The flush draw did break out, which is really all that we're beating right now, uh, but not too concerned about it because we do hold the queen of diamonds, less likely that he has a flush draw. So I don't think he's going to be bluffing too much here. Unfortunately, I'm just going to have to let my cards go getting a little frustrated, but so is life. So is poker. So we are wrapping up the session, obviously just charging the car outside the brook here, and it's getting really frustrating, honestly, uh, playing these sessions. And it just, as you can tell, like from past few videos, things really just haven't really gone our way. And it's hard to get down on after such a short sample size, but because I'm only playing for three hours, we only get a small number of hands, and the vlog only showcases just a very small portion of what's going on and uh in the long term of things it's not really a big deal it's just negative variance but from a short term perspective uh it gets annoying because i want to post like really entertaining vlogs for you guys and on um, the past i've uploaded some insane banger videos and recently just nothing too crazy um anyways we were in the game for 1500 out of the game for 1033 you could definitely say that if i got away from the first hand um, the being in the beginning of the video i would have just broken even but also like i could have four bet and uh, played that hand so much better than how I did that first hand. But anyways, I um, hopefully enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you enjoyed, made it this far, trying to, you know, do something fun for you guys. Uh, I'm going to Vegas in about a week and a half, so we got some Vegas vlogs coming up. So be on the lookout for that. Thanks so much for watching. See you guys next time. Peace.